Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Friday, October 25th, here with a weekend market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets, the current market environment, and finish off looking at some sector analysis. So it was a strong week out there. We're going to jump right into our dashboard. You can see we rallied into the close here on Friday, all of the major indices closing higher by about a half a percent, Q's out in front leading 0.79% to the upside. Nice healthy five-day change numbers. Everything green here. The Dow lagging a little bit. The Q's outperforming. But all in all, we're basically up 1% to 1.5% on average here for the major indices over the past five days. We are above all of the key simple moving averages in all of the major indices now. When we scroll down and take a look at sector performance, energy got a nice pop to the upside. Uh, this has been a very lagging, underperforming sector this year, generally speaking, and uh, it was good to see them uh, getting a nice pop there. Semiconductors followed, breaking to new all-time highs, and also Dow Transports. Um, on the downside, we have uh, utilities, we have healthcare, and we have discretionary all uh, underperforming discretionary the only one here that is slightly to the negative uh, otherwise we have a pretty good um, you know kind of movement to the upside all things considered major markets oil five percent pop uh, that certainly explains some of the movement in xle followed by silver and emerging markets and on the downside volatility natural gas and tlt so let's jump into the markets here we nearly got a new all-time closing high for the s p 500 we tested uh, prior all-time highs intra-session, intraday on Friday, but we pulled off just a little bit into the close. But you can see here when we zoom out and um, look at the S&P 500, we are very much at the top end of the range. Let me switch over to the weekly chart. Maybe let's clean it up with... Uh, this view here just to simplify things you can see this now is a weekly picture of the S&P 500 cash market we came very close again to breaking out to new all-time highs but we didn't quite get there uh, but still a strong finish finally getting a strong close to the week one of the things we commented on last week was just the number of tails here on the top end of all of these weekly bar candles just take a look for the past five six weeks in a row we just keep Keep fading we kept pulling off of those highs never gave strong decisive closes uh, and now with this week as we get back up towards these highs we finally have for the first time in six or seven weeks a strong close at the highs so going into next week now we're gonna see can we continue to uh, fight at these highs here can we break out and officially start making new S&P 500 all-time highs we are in the middle of earnings season right now the markets slog through um, quite a bit of uh, earnings releases this week. Ultimately, as we can see by the results, uh, they we're happy with uh, the aggregate uh, reporting of companies this week as we finished, of course, up over 1%. Uh, so we still have plenty of more earnings season to um, wade through. And we did uh, talk about in our midweek video some of the uncertainty out there in just the growth sector and some of those uh, kind of hallmark leaders that have been gro that are the strong growers, the fast growers that have been helping fuel this market to the upside. They've been uh, they saw another round of selling earlier this week, but we've at least at this point seen sufficient rotation and other leadership sort of picking up the slack uh, as some of these major indices start to challenge old all time highs. So all in all, S and P five hundred strong this week third week in a row to the upside here we're attacking these prior all-time highs let's see if we can actually break through and start making new highs next week if we take a quick look at the vix here uh this sold off this week uh naturally let's switch over to the spot vix uh, we closed down in the 12s. So the 12s are something we haven't seen since uh, July of this year. Uh, we've been up and floating mostly around you know, 15 or 16 north of that, all the way up to 20 for the past two or three months. And now we're finally starting to come back to very uh, much more subdued levels here, uh, which then tend to correspond with kind of that low volatility grind type of market. So we'll see if the VIX is comfortable down here for more than just a day or two. Uh, and again, Again, next week, we can keep an eye on that um, kind of coincides with whether or not this market uh, may decide to break out. The Russell 2000, uh, we've talked about some of the uh, outperformance here recently. Uh, this week, it was pretty much 
in line. It was more so the NASDAQ doing the heavy lifting, but still 1.5% to the upside here for the Russell 2000. Volume's been light on these past couple of weeks, but we are kind of creeping back up towards the upper end of uh, this year-long range here, and the Russell 2000, of course, will be an interesting one to measure if it can get back up to this 159, and uh, that will be its big breakout test if it can get back up there. NASDAQ 100 we can see is in fact closing at new highs here. If we go to the daily chart, you can see punching through closing at uh, 195.64. The prior close for the NASDAQ 100 was 195.29 in terms of all-time highs. So we do have some all-time highs getting set here uh, by the NASDAQ 100. If we look at the composite outright, the NASDAQ composite outright, you can see a little bit more to go before this actually starts breaking out to new highs. But the Qs, uh, this is a great sign here that we're starting to get a breakout this past five or six days of chop here looking like it's turning into a continuation pattern to the upside. Notice the open gap here never got filled back from uh, beginning mid-October. Uh, so right around 190 when we gapped above there, we never filled it and now we're starting to move back to the upside here. Shows just continued kind of pent up strength here. Uh, be interesting to see again if the queues can continue to add to these gains next week. We get a, probably a lot more uh, tech earnings on deck for next week. So that is the market environment overall. It is rosy out there. We've seen some good movement this week. Bulls are firmly in charge. Again, doesn't mean we can get complacent, doesn't mean we can buy everything. You just have to still, you know, stick to your plan, manage that risk, but certainly uh, some good progress there to the upside. So let's take a look at some other major markets now. Go to TLT which was down uh, almost 1% this week, kind of sliding lower here. Really don't have any new comments. It's still pretty much in a, uh, what I would consider a consolidation phase here. So going to let it do its thing. You can see volume really drying up here. Uh, but all in all, we're still pretty much trendless and range bound. If we go to metals next, gold, you can see this started to perk up this week, which was interesting. We talked about it in our last video, just how quiet and nascent it sort of was getting in here around this 140 level. We're starting to get a little vol expansion here to the upside. This could, uh, you know, if this starts to really trigger here, it's got more to prove. Uh, but if it can start clearing above and start making continuation over some of these September ranges and highs, uh, then gold here could be in store for potentially another leg up. It's too early to say that now, but uh, some good progress there by the bulls this week. If we look at silver here, pretty much the same thing. Good volume coming in here on Friday, taking up one and a half percent move to the upside. It was nice and quiet and sideways here for the past, uh, really all of October. And now we're starting to get some range expansion to the upside. So very similar to gold. We'll see if this can start marching higher and turn into a um, multi-month continuation pattern. If we go to oil uh, and energy next, uh, oil getting the breakout this week, uh, the higher lows and lower highs pattern of tightening that we saw throughout the uh, course of October, starting to resolve to the upside. We're getting a move back up into the $12 area. That's where some uh, a lot of overhead suppliers, some of the top end of this range throughout the course of uh, really much of this year has taken place. Uh, so short term trend is up. We do have the MACD, which is pushing into positive territory as well. So some good signs there in the short term for oil bulls. And last but not least, for major uh, indices, we got the natural gas here, which is still kind of going sideways, carving out what potentially could be some type of higher low that would certainly be the bull optimistic case here uh still yet to be seen still like all the volume that's coming in here but it still has to prove itself a bit more really want to see this just get back over 20 get back over these recent highs here and start heading up that would give um you know, a little more added confidence that uh, buyers uh, are stepping up here and uh, accumulating or at least uh, for a short term move in natural gas. So that is uh, that is the roundup there for the major markets. Let's take a look at sectors. Let's see what um, performed and underperformed uh, for this week. So top performing was XLE, as we mentioned at the top of the video here. You can see uh, on a uh, wider view lens here for XLE, it is still in a pretty troubled market. We talked about the fact that it's still pretty much uh, might be the worst performing sector this year, although don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. It's definitely in the bottom of the pack, uh, but you can see here, 
maybe it's kind of still in this channel here, kind of working itself back up to this upper range. It's got more to prove here, but for sure, uh, in the short term at least, there's a trend to the upside. Maybe it gets back up into the 60s, uh, and we'll see how it acts up there. Uh, semiconductors uh, pushing back up to the upside here. So we had this, uh, we had a good amount of volatility this week in this sector. So we were bouncing around here. We kind of filled this gap. We were moving up and down uh, in, you know, kind of one to 2% pop pops here. And uh, ultimately we did finish off the highs here. Uh, I mean, new highs, uh, finished at new highs, closing strongly, breaking out, and this adds to the list of sort of new all-time highs, and semis at new highs has is, is been a kind of poster child leadership group for the market uh, for the past many years, so it is constructive to see that it is pushing higher here, and it continues uh, to do so right now. Last but not least, uh, for top performers is XBI. This is the uh, equal weight biotech ETF. Uh, this really got hit pretty hard here into September, making new uh, kind of lows, um, not on the year, but uh, filling this old gap from January and sort of um, uh, undercutting uh, all of the recent supply. It's quite uh, pretty much V-shaped back up here, back over the September lows. So it's holding up uh, still again, kind of like energy. It's got more work to do. You can see there's still a lot of overhead supply here, but some good momentum for, ne for, for the um, biotech ETF. Nice little change of pace there. On the downside, uh, again, consumer discretionary here, kind of underperforming, still down just 1%, really not much else to say about it, kind of came back in and filled this gap overall. It's still pretty much consolidating here, a series of lower lo lower highs and higher lows, uh, just needs more time, but XLY kind of in the middle of the range and just going sideways. XLV uh, was still up slightly on the week, but uh, underperforming the relative on a relative basis. Uh, it is back here, back up to these prior highs. I mean, this thing has been amping up and kind of fueling sideways here for quite a long time. So lots of supply traded in this, uh, you know, $85 to $95 area. Eventually, this will break out. Well, we're still kind of waiting for uh, that to happen. But uh, this is still kind of moving comfortably sideways. And XLU was the third uh, underperformer this week, still up positive. But this makes sense here as a risk on sort of weak utilities take a little bit of a breather. Uh, all in all, they're still pretty much at all-time highs. The trend is still strong here for XLU, uh, so really no damage to speak of uh, or concern at this point for utilities. So that is it. That is what I have for this week's video. Hopefully you guys had a great week trading out there. Thanks as always for tuning in and watching. You can subscribe at our YouTube channel or Head on over to thetraderist.com. You can catch the videos there uploaded weekly. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Tuesday for next week's midweek market recap video.